Hello, Keith Ruck here at VengeMachinery.org. So we are continuing our uh, shop tour. I'm still on the way up to Arnfest, and some of you guys will probably recognize this uh, crazy character here, if you don't know him already. Brian Block, or BCBLOCO2 on YouTube. Yeah, he's got a YouTube channel, and uh, so this, we were just talking, he, he's insane, he's crazy, so he, he, you know, I know you guys are really enjoying watching my shop build, I have been really enjoying watching his shop build because he uh, is taking an old barn up here in northern Kentucky. This part, well, how old is this barn originally? Probably 150 years. 150 year old barn and converting it into a shop. And um, you, you, you got to go watch his videos, guys, because when he started on this thing, I mean, this barn, uh, it, I wouldn't say it was about to fall in, but it was well. It was it, about to fall in. Okay, it, it, it was, was well <laughs> on its way. It was well on its way to <laughs> falling in. And uh, he has come in here and totally redone this thing. Uh, and just an amazing job. This thing was originally kind of a post and beam construction, you know, put together with... And it's all pegged, you know, which still is up there in the top. Pegs and stuff. It had a whole second level in here. But uh, what he ended up doing, and, and when he first started talking about it, I thought he was crazy. But now that he's got it done, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, we'll, we'll get a shot in a minute, but kind of around us, he's got a, a metal frame in here. But the reason is, is right ab above me right now is a 15-ton bridge crane. Because you got to lift heavy stuff sometimes. A um, 15-ton bridge crane. So. so who wouldn't kill to have a 15-ton bridge crane in their shop? <laughs> so if, if you're going to dream, dream big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm really jealous. So uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to to meet Brian. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, you need to get out there and look at it. And in addition to that, the reason he's building this shop is uh, he also does some machining videos and stuff, and he's got quite a bit of content. And I'm real anxious, and I haven't seen it yet, but he's got some, he's already got some machinery uh, to put in here, but he's gonna need the 15 ton bridge crane to, to set in here. Try. Tell, tell him about that. So I got a, a horizontal boring mill about 47,000 pounds, uh, sitting on a semi-trailer right now in one of my other buildings. It was what finished the deal on this. Originally, I was going to raise the roof on my existing shop because I'd bought a CNC machine, which is a 50, Cat 50 machine, uh, 60, 30, 30 travels, so it's a big machine too. It's 26,000 pounds by itself. <laughs> and it was too tall to go in my other shop, so it's sitting in a buddy's garage. It's been in there for probably four years now, so as I've worked on this project. And uh, the boring mill, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. The iron addiction got too severe at that point, and I was going to have to do something. But if you watch in my regular videos, you see I work on a lot of big, heavy stuff. Uh, tractor transmission cases and engine blocks and axles and things that are thousands of pounds and moving that stuff's always a big pain. So the bridge crane deal was, we're gonna solve this problem. And, and no more will we be pushing around cherry pickers and flipping stuff over on the floor and fighting with dollies and jacks and rollers and everything else. No, nope, that's all gone. But that problem has been solved and no more. Everything in here is gonna be the mill tables, lathes, will all be underneath the hook for the crane, so you can pick up anything and move it anywhere around. Stuff can't get on the floor and block it where you can't roll it because it's up in the air. So, so the bridge crane, uh, how old is the bridge crane? This crane, I don't know because the company's out of business, but I'm going to say it's in the 40s. From the literature, I was able to find one place I found documentation on these cranes being made and it dated to the 1940s. Uh, it's all hand operated, there's no electrics on it, so it's chained for traverse, and it's also chained to operate the cable for the lift. So it's all hand operated, which, you know, it takes more work to use, but personally I use chain falls at work all the time. Yeah. And it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big a deal. And the other thing is, is you can be so sensitive because you've got a feel for it. Whereas the electric hoist, if you get a really high dollar one, it's maybe got a little sensitivity to it. 
but most of them are either on or they're off. So when you're trying to set something down on a mill table, it's click, boom, and it's down. And so I don't like that, but with the chain, you can just ease it down right. and not slam stuff down on your equipment. So I think it'll be an advantage as far as that goes. And I tell you, I'm not going to use the full 15 tons most of the time. I'll just have it on a little hoist so I don't have to pull yeah. six miles of chain to raise it up or down. Let's, let's move the camera and show this thing over here because it's pretty impressive in its own. So yeah, so look at here. You see the hook down here? That <laughs> thing's huge. <laughs> I guess that's in frame. I, I can't tell, but uh, look, look, can you see it? Okay, yeah. So, I mean, this is the part that, that slides back and forth on the on the bridge crane. The bridge crane, how wide is that? It's uh, 25 foot. 25 foot wide. So, my word, look at the, the, the drum on this thing. It's incredible. This drum's an interesting piece, too, because it's, it's all a casting and then lays turn all the grooves for the cable to, to lay in so that when it winds up it all goes in its each individual groove and it doesn't lay over top of it. Fully threaded. So yeah, yeah fully it's threaded. A fully threaded drum. Cool. Fully cable drum. Neat. So I got the camera kind of backed up. It's raining outside so you really I can't get back too far because my camera get wet. But you can kind of see the the actual uh, bridge moving in here, which is pretty neat. It doesn't take much. Doesn't take much at all. 15 ton load lifter. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I said in reality, it's, it's capable of all the steel and everything in here. It could go 50,000 pounds, actually. So you're, you, you're an engineer by training, right? Right, yeah, I'm a, so you, I got a master's in mechanical engineering. So, so you've done all the math on everything in here, so you know all the, what yeah, this thing will support. Yeah, support structure and everything. Cool. I know what the weakest link is. <laughs> you, is that you? <laughs> no, not me. So maybe my nerve might be the weakest link. So, so uh, do you really want to try that? But, you know, if you look at what I've done here, my nerve ain't too, it's a, uh, it's pretty ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I wish I could get an outside shot, but if you want to see an outside shot of the building, just go check out his channel. Like I said, it's raining outside right now. Uh, but if you look back here in the back, let's say, let's move the camera and show you how thick the concrete's going to be back here. So back here is where you plan on putting the it's horizontal. The horn mill goes. And, yeah. and how heavy did you say that was? 47,000 pounds. 47,000 pounds. And we're basically. You know, the concrete here was about two and a half, three feet deep, two and a half feet deep. Yeah, I'm, I'm six one, so this is probably 30 inches right here. And he's planning on putting the concrete all the way down to the ground here, so he's going to have a pretty thick slab back here. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be two foot thick in this corner back here underneath the machine because it, it's got legs that go in the floor. It's got outboards that support the table in addition to the actual mill in the center. So they go in the floor so that you don't come up on them when you're moving stuff up to the table. So that way it sits flush and they go 10 inches in the floor and then they want another foot of concrete under that. So. Wow. Wow. 22 inch minimum. So we've well, got 24 plus back here. So cool. Fill it all up. So uh, again, go check out his channel on, on him trans transitioning this old barn into a really awesome shop. Uh, but what I really want to see is I want to see the board mill. Let's go take a look. All right, let's go. <laughs> so, uh, Adam Booth, eat your heart out, buddy. That's right, the little Kearns is a toy. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is amazing. <laughs> so, how big of a table or whatever you've got on this thing? Uh, this table is uh, 36 by 96. And. Uh, that's what the travel, the travels are uh, four foot vertical, 120 out, and 96 long. So you can put a four foot sheet of plywood on this and drill holes in it everywhere without ever moving it. <laughs> so, these are the runners that go in the floor that this table actually okay. sits on. So, yeah. On the outer parts, and then it's on the mill, and of course the screws and everything it moves it in and out as well. So, what have you got behind it? Is that? That's the that's the rest of it. That, this all belongs sitting on that. 
Okay, so most of this will actually be down in the ground, I guess, and the table is... Yeah, these two pieces would be in the ground, and then these feet underneath here, they roll on them. Okay. Flush, and then your table here is turned that way. I got you. I got you. It moves in and out and goes crossways. So this is essentially the, the cross, and then that's the long over there. I got you. It's, it's taken apart. Cause Right, yeah, it's in pieces right now. It's in pieces. It's only got a 15 ton crane, 47,000 is too big, so, but since it's split up, it's not 47. It's 47 total on this trailer, but yeah. in pieces, it's not that you, much. Awesome, awesome. Um, got a nice little 15 horse motor on it there. Yeah, yeah. You know, about the size of half of a 55 gallon barrel. <laughs> <laughs> so. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So, where'd you where'd you manage to find this thing at? Uh, this machine comes from almost Chicago. Okay. Uh, I would say it, at one point in time it was probably in a factory in the Gary, Indiana area, and then it went to another shop, and I ended up getting it from them when they bought a bigger boring mill. <laughs> so this so, one was too little. Yeah, this one was too small. So they they got one that was. Uh, it was one where the table is actually the floor and the column moves around instead of okay. so it was a stationary table instead of a moving table. Wow. Wow. What, who, what's the maker on this? This is a Giddings and Lewis okay. four inch spindle. And about when was it made? Uh, it's in that same late 40s, early 50s time frame as most all my machines. Cool. So, awesome. It, uh, 30 inches spindle travel, so you can bore out 30, or you can use bars and you can go 10 foot because you got 10 foot of travel on that bed over there. Wow. Wow. So this is good for line boring blocks and doing cam journals and that kind of thing. I do a lot of engine work, so that's for me. It's my main purpose. And then always running out of room. That's always one of the, one of the big problems I run into is having enough clearance to work on what you're trying to work on. But with this, that pretty well solves that because unless you're working on really, really, really big stuff, you've got a lot of room. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just big, but really, really, really big stuff. Yeah, really, really big stuff. <laughs> the stuff they bring in on train cars instead of. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. That was one. Of Somebody said I should put rail service into my shop. <laughs> well, you should. So, yeah. You should. You're probably just a little too far away, though. Yeah, huh? well, it's really only about. And it's not much further than the three phase. About a mile and a half, two miles the railroad tracks. So. Well, as much as you've done on the barn, that's nothing. So, so yeah, I'm not sure what the neighbors would think about me <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, Yeah. So, show, yeah, number one, look how tall this thing is. He's standing basically on the ground. He's up on a trailer, but he's standing on the ground and. Yeah, and I'm 6'1", so basically this machine is twice as tall as I am. And uh, I got to have 14 foot ceilings. And actually in the camera shot right here, you can't even see the top of it. So uh, it's, it's out of the shot. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's got four foot of travel this way. And act, it's actually got more than that because it'll go four foot over top of the table plus six inches under the table. Wow. So you can actually drill into your table if you're stupid enough to do that. But, uh, this is your feed in and out. And then you got a fine adjust here. And this machine actually has got two spindles on it. Uh, you've got your main basic milling on there. There we go. Oh, look at there. And you got another, you got a secondary auxiliary spindle, which is like a Morse tape of four. Yeah. That you can put drill bits and stuff in, and it runs. Uh, two times or three times the speed of this, so you can get good speed on small bits still and use that. So yeah, that. small stuff like two inch drill bits, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's stuff that <laughs> and it's got, it's, there's a screws going down there for tail stock so that it can actually raise and lower the same as this. And then this is all set up. It's got digital readout too on it that came with it, so that all works. Just your clutch, table feed, raise lower, graphics, feeds, pretty much everything you need from 
doing milling or drilling or boring or whatever you want to do. These are probably as far as manual machines go, the most versatile manual machine there is. Yeah. I would love to have a much smaller one in my shop, but I'd have to repour the concrete to think of something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Not to well, mention put in a 15 ton bridge crane. Well, 25 T's like uh, Dave's got on in his little steam shop, that would be yeah. kind of the perfect size for most home shops. I like the bigger stuff. Cool. Cool. So what other machines have you got for the new shop? So, well, the other machine that's not here uh, is big Cincinnati CNC, and then we've got all the machines that are in my existing shop, so we can go take a look at them. Okay. So. Let's do it. So, uh, Brian's an official member of the Monarch Club. That's right. This, this is the number one money maker in the shop. Is my This was really the first machine tool I bought, so uh, I've had it the longest. And it's a really good machine. It's a 20 by 96 queen centers. You can squeeze more than that on it because it's actually about a 10 foot bed, but they just rate it 20 by 96. So it's not as big as Keith, but it's bigger than Adam's. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. What's the weight on this one? Uh, I don't know. Okay, mine actually I'm gonna say has probably around 10,000. Yeah, because mine mine actually has the weight on it, but mine's a little bit newer newer model. Yeah. But uh, and yours isn't quite this long. No, mine's not near this long. So. Yours is about twice as long as mine, but this mine's is probably about as long as your Lodge and Shipley. If you yes, know. this is about the same length as the Lodge and Shipley. Of course, our Lodge and Shipley is a 16-inch um, swing, and this wow. one's basically a 20-inch, so yeah. a little bit bigger there. Uh, but there's a lot of similarities between the Lodge and Shipley's and the Monarchs. It will, it'll pull a good chip <laughs> off there. That's yeah. About, a, about chip. a half inch by 40 thousandths probably. The chip weighs about half a pound. <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite, but there's some weight to that chip. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So that, that was one of the leftovers from the uh, turn, turn off series or whatever. Right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun doing that. But now I, I, I predominantly try not to get chips like these anymore. I like to get all my chips a little bitty where I can just suck them up with a vacuum cleaner. I don't like stringy chips. I hate them. Yeah. Very nice. So it looks like it's in pretty good shape too. It is. It's in real good shape. Uh, and I told John Saunders when he was here that you can put a, a 96 inch piece in here and turn it and fits, you know, like three or four inch diameter where it doesn't flex. It'll be within a thousand from in the end. That's that's pretty good. So. That, that's really good. That's some tight ways. What's it? It's all been a lot. You know, it's got to do with leveling and twisting, yeah. and it's all been tweaked. And then sitting on these two-inch spacers, like what you were going to do on yours. But, right. So well, that might fall over. Yeah, that might yeah. fall over. I mean, that. That's, that's those... what I hear. But it's been like that since probably 2005. So I guess it'll be okay. Y'all hear him? Okay. <laughs> All you guys that were giving me a hard time, he doesn't have big four inch pads on the bottom of his and they're about the same diameter I was gonna put under mine. Yeah, just, so, we're just, falling off just shot. don't lean on it, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could run and hit it and you couldn't budge it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna try because it'll win. <laughs> Maybe I'll get your truck. <laughs> so I had a twenty horse phase converter at John Saunders NYC C and C event. And uh, I just happened to win it. <laughs> and uh, I asked him, I said, well, that's all well and good, but that's too small. I said, can I upgrade it and pay the difference? And they were nice enough to work with me, and that's what I did. So I got this 50 horse one that's going to be going in the new shop. Cool. Then I'll leave my existing one up here for running my woodworking machines. And this will just be a wood shop, and all the metal will be in the, quant in the, uh, the barn down there. So have you got this running yet? You yeah, it's it up. Okay, it, it, I've got a I've got a forty horse that I'm running going to run my shop off of, but I'm embarrassed to say I don't have it hooked up yet, and that's mainly because I'm still kind of in a construction uh, mode in my shop. And right now, over on the side that I need to be working on, I got all my machines piled up because I'm working on my ceiling, so I, I can't get to the phase converter to wire it up, and I <laughs> and I'm just itching to get it going. But hopefully, between now and Christmas, I'll get all that, it's a whole that lot going. Quieter than my old one was. That's yeah. Sure. Turn it on. I want to hear it. I have, I've never heard one run. Saw the lights dim. He hadn't quite got the power on this one he so. needs. <laughs> he will in the new shop, but yeah. uh, 
We only got 100 amp service in here, so it's a little limited. Yeah, but that's not very noisy at all. Like, these American Rotary units are really nice, guys. Uh, go check out American Rotary if you haven't. And uh, actually, if you go over, look down in my, my uh, uh, comments or whatever down below the, the description, you can get a 10% discount uh, off of my channel. There's a, a code down there you can use if you're looking for an American Rotary phase converter to get a little bit better deal on one. Cool. So we're in here now looking at the big horizontal mill. And as you guys know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of a horizontal mill. I know quite a few of us on YouTube now have horizontal mills, but. That's the only mill I got. It's the only one he's got. He <laughs> doesn't even have a vertical mill, some except this one. It's got some, the vertical head. Some people use a bridge for for their small mill, and I use this. <laughs> this thing's nice. So how big of a table does this thing have? 20 by 80 table on this one. Really, really so nice. It's uh, 18 by 50 travel. So this is a horizontal machine, but of course it's got a vertical head on here, so you can take the head off, I guess, on this one. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah just pull off and the overarm comes out. And then I've got a Toolmaker's overarm over there, which has got the universal double head right, on the right. separate power motor also that you put on the top, which I was gonna do in here. But then I said, nah, you know, I'll just do that while I'm moving to a new shop because I can use a bridge crane to do that job and not kill myself versus trying to do it with this cherry picker, so. Well, you know, I've got a, Kearney Trekker number 2H. I know uh, Adam Booth's got a big KNT. Uh, yeah, most uh, YouTube guys are all, all KNT guys. I'm the lone and, Cincinnati pretty much. And, and quite honestly, guys, these Cincinnatis, they may even have a little bit of a step up on the KNTs. These Cincinnatis are nice mills. Uh, and I don't know why the KNTs seem to be in most of the YouTube channel guys, but uh, if I were to run across a Cincinnati mill with the opportunity to pick one up, I would not hesitate one second, it's a really nice machine. Well, I think back in the day, the K&Ts were cheaper mill than the Cincinnati. That's probably, there's, so there's more, 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 more plentiful out there, so, but these were actually a heavier mill. They were actually bigger, heavier machines, so. Yeah. Uh, which yeah, is probably why they were a little bit more money. Dovetailed on the top instead of being so the over the two rams. Yeah. And the, it's actually got a spring and a mass counterbalance deal built into the overarm that takes vibration and dampens the for doing milling for heavy cutting right to make it cut smoother so i know the machine shop that i worked in back uh, back in the 80s when i first got out of high school and where i got most of my machine shop experience we had a, a pretty good size cincinnati in there it wasn't this big but it's bigger than the 2h i have and that was the first horizontal mill I ever used, and I, I fell in love with the horizontal mill there. <laughs> this machine, it's about 16,000 pounds. Yeah, it's light. So, lightweight. Yeah. lightweight. Yeah, I rolled it in here, just me and two guys. So it's not <laughs> <laughs> no craning in here. Yeah, it's no. a lot more work. But. He doesn't even have a bridge crane to take the head off there. So, so now yeah. I've got to use you the, got the cherry picker. picker. Yeah. Off <laughs> so that's a bit of a job. Try to take it on. I schedule my work in here based off of how the mill set up, whether it's in horizontal mode or vertical mode. So the, when people bring me jobs, I, you know, I tr try and do them grouped together. So. so when you get the the new shop over here, you're going to have to find another one, so you can just leave one set up vertical and one horizontal. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be the easiest. So I actually, probably why I, I want to definitely have that uh, toolmaker's overarm mounted on here because yeah. the ability to to uh, rotate your cutter into any direction is nice to be really? able to do. It is very nice. So, also very, these mills they got a lot wider, tape a lot wider on them base on them, the, yeah. And the K and T's, but very, it's only it's 25 horse, so it's not a real big machine. <laughs> but it is the biggest one I've got, <laughs> <laughs> as far as power wise, anyway. What's amazing is how big some of these machines were. And of course, most of those really big machines have long since been scrapped because nobody wants them, and they, it costs more to move them than probably what they're worth to most people. But, yeah. uh, but man, there were some big, big jokers that were back in the day. Moving one of these is not for the faint of heart by any means. By no it's, means. It's, it's a workout. But you know, if you want to run a little cutter on here, something like one of these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we talk about face mills now. That is a face mill. So that's what it takes. You want to do some real cutting. You get you one of these and you can put your nice slab on here and just plow off a foot at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Brian doesn't play, guys. Surface grinder. That's a big one, too. So that's uh, 12 by 24 on this one. 
and it's all hydraulic. So there's no hands to crank on this one. You just move the levers. That's nice. So I've got an 18 by 24, and which mine's, I don't, I don't think, I think mine's mechanical, but it's automatic. You can, you can, I haven't actually ran it yet. Uh, what size wheel does this take? Uh, 10 inch probably. I, I think that's what, it's the same, I think it's the same size wheel as what mine takes. I'm looking at the cab, I got some wheels in the cabinet looking at it. Yeah. It's two, two by 10, I think, is what size wheels on it. Okay. Uh, this machine is great for flattening stuff out. It's not worth anything for doing anything else with too much. I wouldn't try to do fancy features or anything like that with it. But uh, man, I do. I do a lot of wet clutch stuff and reface the discs. And you can throw a disc on here and piece of cake. Dust it off, and you're ready to go. Or you know, if you want to take a cylinder head or something and grind it flat, you can do anything like that. Pretty easy in it. And Actually, I, I travels wise, it's probably more than that, but I only got a 12 by 24 chuck on it. Gotcha. So, and it's another, it's a pretty good heavy machine. It's all cast iron base. It's got about 20 gallons of hydraulic oil in it. So, uh, worst thing about this when you move it is you got to be sure you don't tip it because it runs oil everywhere. <laughs> if you do. So, yeah. Built, built in cooling. I run cooling on it all the time whenever I'm grinding, keep the dust down in here. So. Very nice. So, so guys, that's going to pretty much be a wrap on our shop tour over here at the at Blocks Heavy Machinery. And that right. <laughs> that's going to be the new name, I guess, for when when the barn gets going. It'll be Blocks Heavy Machines. So. You definitely got some heavy machines, and uh, I tell you, I've I've really enjoyed it. Appreciate your hospitality today and showing us around. And um, yeah, thanks I, for stopping by. Yeah, We're glad to have you. So. And uh, again, guys, go check out his channel. He's got some good machining content. He's got some good shop building content, and uh, he does some pretty cool stuff. So I, I know I keep try to keep tabs on him pretty well on there. Big jobs for my specialty. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Brian. We'll uh, we'll catch you guys later. We're going to be bringing you some more shop tour videos uh, down the road. So be looking for those. Thanks. <laughs>